Yep. the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow weary or faint. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let us pray. This is the time, as are all times, when God is with us. This is the place, as are all places, where God is present. Be still and know this. Loving, creating spirit, may we be lovingly creative. May we be lovingly creative in our friendships, in our churches, in our society, living out the way of Jesus, preparing the way of the Lord. May we recognize the gifts and the good in one another, May we accept the dignity of difference and use our differences in a way that is lovingly creative. May we be open to one another, listening to one another, patient with one another. Loving, creative spirit, may we not be afraid to recognize that the old order changes, yielding place to new, and that God fills himself in many ways. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Amen. It is my great privilege and pleasure to introduce Albert Boko as our speaker this evening. When he was training for the ministry, Albert came to serve as a probationer in Cardonald Parish Church, where I was the minister. Now, we are talking about 40 years ago. We've both aged a bit since then. At Cardonald, he was a bright and energetic assistant, good at relating to people and popular with everyone. I think we were a good team. You might disagree. I'll get a chance in a minute. And we introduced our, didn't we, various orders of service, imaginative old orders of service, before that was happening anywhere else in the church. Remember, we produced a wee songbook. Uh, 
I don't know where he ever got the words for, but later on, a lot of them turned up in songs of God's people. At that time, Albert told me he saw his calling as going round the pubs, singing and playing his guitar. Well, he didn't quite do that, but music has always played an important part in evangelizing. And throughout his ministry, he has proved to be an innovator in many ways. In addition to serving as minister of St. Andrew's Church Bonnes, St. Andrew's Parish Church Bonnes, for, what, 34 years, I think, about, he was founder of the Vine Trust. Now, the Vine Trust is a charity which aims to help some of the poorest children and communities around the world. Albert was also convener of the Church Without Walls, the planning group then, and that's not so very far away, maybe, from where he is today. On his appointment as moderator, he was described as the first digital moderator. A one newspaper reported the Church of Scotland appoints its first cyber chaplain. This sounds like something out of Doctor Who, doesn't it? A <laughs> cyber chaplain. Tonight, we are going to learn why this was a most apt description. For Albert is the founder and leader of Sanctuary First, an app promoting daily worship and prayers. And he is also the director and founder of Sanctus Media. I'm sure that we will learn much that will help us as we make future plans for our congregations. Albert Bull. Well, thank you very much, John, for that very warm welcome. Uh, when you hear these things, you don't recognize yourself <laughs> because um, no one is really doing things on their own. We're always part of a team. We're always part of a community that makes things happen. And I'm going to be talking a wee bit about that, the importance of how we can be shaping a faith community in a digital age. But thank you for that warm welcome. And I'm delighted to be with you this evening. And also to those who are looking on the internet, looking in, welcome also. We're so glad, and I'm so glad that you're able to look in and be part of this lecture this evening. Now, due to the logistics this evening, I'm afraid it's a talking head you're going to get rather than seeing slick pictures behind me or, or, or a, what we might say, a, yeah, visual aids behind me. Instead, you're going to get an old-fashioned address speaking to you. But if you're at home or even if you're here, and you would like to, if the lecture gets a wee bit boring, you can go to your phone and switch on your phone and you can download the Sanctuary First app. If you go to the App Store, if you're an iPhone user, or you can go to Google Play and you can download your app for your uh, Android. That has a summary of all the things that might have been going up on the screen. So there you have it in your hands if you need it this evening. Let me start by making a passing reference to the vision and philosophy that has shaped the ministry that I've been involved in. And before we look later at, perhaps if we have time, the theology I see emerging from the digital space. At the heart of the vision that has shaped my ministry is a belief that local worshiping communities or parishes should have within itself all that is needed, all the creative gifts that is needed in order to serve the world in which they have been called to be salt and light. So to start off with, I want to affirm the entrepreneurial opportunities that, are, that, that being a parish minister in the Church of Scotland can bring. The role of the parish church is not over yet, but it needs to embrace a new way of developing and sustaining community, and this undoubtedly will involve online ministry. This evening I want to talk to you about one specific and one specific network 
the church emerging out of online ministry. However, I'm also passionate in my belief that it is essential for the local church to flourish that a worldwide vision of service is also necessary. Online ministry enables such a perspective to become a reality as we talk global church, global and local together. John has made passing reference to the Vine Trust. In 1985, I was able to found the Vine Trust, and by the year 2000, 2001, the trust had emerged from being a grant-giving organization to seeking grants. In other words, we shifted our gear from resourcing and engaging with the developing world to become a partner and to begin to reach out into the world. And that partnership involved actually my colleague in the next parish in Bones in the Old Kirk. The first ship went sailing across the Atlantic, taking hope to the people of Amazonia when the, 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 the planes were going in to the buildings in New York. That week was an amazing and challenging week for all of us. But across the churches, people got involved, and in Bones, the growth of Vine Trust began to inspire people to see the need that they can make a difference in the world. And of course, in 2006, we ended up with Princess Anne becoming our patron. There is no local community, what I'm saying is, too small or too old or too poor or even too rich that cannot be inspired by being part of the world church. And if you're going to make any impact in the world, we need to have that world vision, that world understanding. I'm saying all that because I think it's important that it helps us begin to see the passion that leads us to do other work, but we need to see ourselves no longer just simply constrained to a parish, but we begin to see ourselves as connecting with the global church. Around 2000, after organizing the Scottish Cathedral Cycle Challenge, which raised around 12,000 pounds, a, a new youth media project was set up, which eventually went under the name of St. Andrew's Multimedia Youth Project. This project centered on the use of technology and was created out of a team of enthusiastic church members who had a passion to develop alternative worship patterns. Again, something emerging out of local parish church. Staff eventually was employed and project work grew out of the church and supported various other forms of ministry. We were rapidly becoming a parish of network entrepreneurial projects, networked into society, church, society out with church. Our aims was to develop a team of professionally qualified people who were seeking to integrate their skills where appropriate, along with volunteers to serve the needs within the community and the wider context of national and international vision. I'm saying all this because I think it's important that we begin to understand that small local churches can have a vision and God can bless that and local people can see their gifts and need to be inspired to see that they can use their gifts within the parish community to make a difference, not only in their parish, but in the world. In St. Andrew's Bowness, we were exploring the meaning of emerging church in two distinct areas. Firstly, by seeking to develop a multidisciplinary missionary team in the area of creative media. And secondly, creating teams in social outreach at a local and international level. In 2008, Sanctus Media and Sanctuary First eventually emerged out of the original youth media project. And for the rest of this paper, I'm going to talk to you about the work and the ministry of Sanctuary First. The reason why it had to emerge out of that was that the treasurer came to me one day and he said, look, our this is 2006, he said, look, there's a whole section of our accounts that's turning over 300,000 pounds a year, and it's nothing to do with just being a parish church. It's a much wider thing. This needs to change because it's not fair. But he was also concerned that uh, he had more work to do, but also we were being pulled to do all kinds of work for others, and we probably needed to have a new vehicle to begin to develop this media ministry. So Sanctuary First serves around a broad community, both within Scotland and across the globe. Thousands of people regularly interact with our website and our app, and many attend worship in their local churches when they can, but others have stopped attending church due to COVID-19, 
and sanctuary first is to become their spiritual home. So it's not just a website that puts on a service on a Sunday at three o'clock, but there's daily worship, there's daily prayer, there's, and I'll be talking about that just in a moment to give you an insight into what we're doing. Can I, with the restructuring of the presbyteries, it seems right time for Sanctuary First to seek a new identity and governance more fitted to the ministry that has been created. And at present, we are considering the merits of becoming a Church of Scotland skill. In 2016, a little bit of the background, I demitted my charge at Bowness to take up the role of leader and minister of Sanctuary First, something that had started in the church that was growing. And in the old free church tradition years ago, it used to be that the old minister left the parish church or left the church and moved on to start something new and to pioneer something new. We tend to put the young men in to pioneer the new things and the old, people, the old guys stay on and do what they're good at doing. But the real challenge is sometimes for some of us older people to step out and do the pioneering, a bit like Abraham. So that's what I did. Uh, people expect me to be a lot younger because, well, you're supposed to be young if you're interested in media. But here I am, I'm 72, and that's where God's called me to do and begin to work in this area. I'm supported by a small team of part-time staff, including Sanctus Media, and by a group of committed volunteers. So we provide a completely unique ministry operating out of the Church of Scotland. We don't own a building, but we own a website that has a capital investment made in it that probably amounts to over half a million over the years. So what do we deliver? We seek to help those who visit Sanctuary First to grow in their faith. We offer a wide range of materials online via our website, our app, our Facebook, and our Instagram platforms. We provide daily prayers and Bible readings that connect with the issues of everyday life and explore creative ways to allow interaction with our users. We have a different writer every week, and the writers are from a broad section of the Church of Scotland. The, the, main, the main focus for the writing is, I say to the writers, I don't care whether you're right wing or you're left wing. But when you come on to pray in Sanctuary First and write in Sanctuary First, you're writing and you're writing and you're creating ministry that is seeking to bring comfort and encouragement to people. It's not about you trying to promote your own particular brand of Christianity. Try and be such a person that writes in such a way that you are speaking about the kerygma, the things that really matter to the faith and encourage people and uplift them in their daily walk with God. So we also have now a daily prayer meeting. Now this is something that Laura started. Laura is a probationer who came to work with us uh, in Sanctuary First. And Laura started this seven o'clock prayer meeting uh, last Christmas. And we didn't know who would, who would want to be part of a, a prayer meeting at seven o'clock in the morning online live. Well, you know, Every week now, every day, there are over 30 to 40 people who come on live for the prayer time. It's just 10-minute prayer time. By the end of the day, around the world, something like sometimes 200, 300 people have viewed that day's prayer. We publish a weekly video sermon based on the weekly theme. We publish regular blogs and podcasts, including the Friday Night Weekly Review a regular podcast reviewing the materials on the site with members of the production team and invited guests. At present, there are over 5,000 original prayers in our digital library and well over 1,000 videos which we have produced and commissioned. We continue to write, commission, and produce new material daily. We produce Sunday Live, an, on an online worship service every Sunday, including opportunities to share in communion. We're also pioneering small weekly connect groups using the resource pack from the website and the weekly teaching video. This has helped us to extend our contact with users into face-to-face -face settings. So we are developing small connect groups that can be used and material that churches can use throughout the country to develop and grow their small user groups. We also have an online coffee shop created an opportunity for those feeling isolated to begin to find community. 
And this continues to be popular even after, you might say, lockdown. And meetings take place for the members in the community, and they meet usually now uh, on, on a Thursday evening. In addition to these interactive opportunities, the weekly book club has also been a source of fellowship and introduction to faith. Friday afternoon, music jam sessions and the secret chord sessions have opened up a new link into the arts community, and we hope to develop further links through filmmaking activities. So the Friday afternoon jam session means that you go on at three o'clock onto Facebook or onto our website or onto our app, and you can link in live to the musicians, and musicians from different parts of the world come on and play their songs. They, I wrote this song this week, and they share their songs, and they talk about their songs. Some of their songs have got a Christian faith. Others are just songs that are uplifting, songs that they've written. But it's a way of creating community and allowing people to share what's on their hearts. We offer pastoral care, conducting weddings and funerals for those with no live connection with church, and any requests for baptisms are carried out in consultation and partnership with local congregations. We believe this aspect of our online ministry has great potential to grow further, reintroducing a new generation to the points of entry into the faith. We also run conferences to help promote the work of Sanctuary First and inspire church leaders to reimagine the church of the future. We aim also to develop this into agreed partnerships within the new presbytery structures. So we're looking to build partnerships with local congregations that they can begin to use our material and our resources and our expertise, but also that we can engage with the parish churches so that they don't only simply become consumers of the work, but they become producers. And there are many talented and gifted people within our parishes that could contribute to the work that we are doing. Our strategic aims, developing a deeper Christian discipleship, growing our worshiping community, redefining the meaning and role of an online congregation, creating partnerships with congregations to contribute to joint mission and worship programs to re-engage children and adults. That's a big area we need to invest more in in church. We need to be investing in our children's work because many of our congregations no longer have children worshiping. But if we use technology correctly, we could start to re-engage young families and bring them back into the life of the church, but also understand there could be a new way of church for them. It does not necessarily need to be our location-based understanding of church. We also want to create various formats for the performing arts, including filmmaking for use in worship and mission. And we also need to continue to create a sustainable revenue income and we have got some ideas about looking at social enterprise. That's a rough idea of where we are as Sanctuary First and what we've been achieving. Now, I don't know if you're up for another 15 minutes of talk. I don't know how my time's going. What, what's, what's, our, what's the timing like? I want to then talk a little bit about a theology of community and how this can be experienced online. Now, this is not a definitive summary, but it is a starting point from which to think further about the topic. So, this is some of my thinking, where I'm going with trying to work out a theology for the church and why we should have an online church. John Cezulis, in his classic work, Being as Communion, gives us, I believe, an excellent framework in which to begin to understand the importance of Christian community. In this work, he also lays out an orthodox understanding of ecclesiology, which is centered around his understanding of communion and community as handed down from the early church fathers. Although this work was written before the commercial development of internet and the intervention of social media, he writes about essential building blocks that will help us understand the essence of building an online Christian community. I think I can think of no better place to start when thinking about building an online community of faith than to consider some of the insights that Sazulis brings us and our understanding of the doctrine of Trinity. 
it will be important for us as digital innovators to contextualize his thinking, but in doing so, we will perhaps enable a digital church to be in conversation with the church fathers of the first four centuries. Sazulis has key insights that will help us understand what we as Christians believe when we speak of human freedom. He believes the church is the vehicle through which God chooses to allow human beings to experience true freedom in community of love and diversity. Now, that's quite a sweeping thing to grasp, that God has chosen the church to set people free. And that's a great challenge for local church to think about that, and what does that mean? To create communities of love and diversity. Today's digital media, which reflects the prevailing views of societies around the world, explores these same issues, debating who has the freedom to control the internet. However, we are unable to square the circle between human freedom and the longing to live in secure community. Indeed, Many Christian denominations struggle with an ecclesiology that has built within it a struggle between the leader and the community. And much of our present leadership thinking has been influenced by 18th, 19th, and 20th century philosophies that understand human beings as isolated units, each of us seeking to assert ourselves over against the other, but ultimately failing to establish our true identity and purpose. Now, not all philosophies bring that forward, but that is a key area where many le leadership concepts are worked out of that kind of philosophy. Digital church has a fresh opportunity to, to explore and engage with these issues and bring the early church fathers into conversation with modernity. Could the online church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, be the means whereby technology is understood as part of God's plan of salvation? for the humanity. Zoom, Skype, Teams, or Facebook, FaceTime are all incarnational aspects of technology that are creating new practical understandings of community, presence, and identity. Freedom and communion and community are more than just words. They are states of mind, but also physical realities that need not be in conflict with the other but lived out in harmony in the life of the church. And that's what Zazulis is arguing about. He's saying that the freedom that we can engage with and community and living community is understood through harmony and the harmonization that comes into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Suzuki argues that harmony between communion and freedom is God's promise and gift to humanity. It is not complete as yet, but we must live and act as though it were. It is the role and the work of the Holy Spirit to help the church to model God's plan for communion and community. Real freedom and diversity is understood and embraced and lived when it is understood as given. It is not owned because we have striven for it, but it is received because it has been given to us. So Zulus contends real freedom and diversity can only truly be found in the church, which is God's given shop window, living out grace. The, Euro the Eucharist is the other event in time and space where communion is once again constituted by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, bringing about the intertwining of time and eternity. An online experience of church must be constituted by the Spirit, it will be a place where communion and diversity is celebrated and sought to be understood across different locations in the same space. Thus, being in communion will recognize difference as well as togetherness. The understanding begins to link a theology that explores separateness through time and space with the immediacy of the local presence of Christ in a specific time and space. It also invites us to explore the paradox of unity in Christ inspired by diversity. It will engage with the complexities of difference and togetherness and come to understand our unity is brought about by the power of the Holy Spirit. Suzulis also adds insights into our understanding of community by suggesting that firstly, neither the one or the many are more important than the other. This has implications for our understanding of leadership and the roles we are called to play in online community. 
Secondly, that neither one or the other has existence before the other. He's talking about the relationship between the Godhead. This reveals the way the doctrine of the Trinity can begin to shape how we value and esteem our ministries on and offline. And thirdly, he suggests that being and relationships are simultaneous. This will shape how we understand communities are formed online, as well as how we understand our person-to-person -person relationships. If you look at these three basic insights carefully, we will begin to recognize how they might help us interpret and develop an ecclesiology for digital church. If we believe that God has chosen the church as the vehicle to bring the world to himself, then he has surely already put this policy into action. So we must consider that God may well be using digital church to enhance our in-person worshiping communities and to accelerate the power of communion and community in the world. In summing up, the digital church is called to live out diversity and unity, particularity and freedom. We must explore an ecclesiology that frees the church from ecclesiologies that promote a dualism of individualism against community. By this I mean leadership that seeks to lead by dictat rather than through collaboration and consensus. A theology of community online is one that seeks to understand that relationships develop out of mutuality. It is not enough to look for followers, you must also become a follower. This notion is developed in Len Sweet's book entitled Viral. Sweet understands that it is important to have the spirit of humility when you seek to build and become part of an online community. It is the spirit of humility that is within the Trinity, preferring each other in love. For an online Christian community, recognizing each other by name and offering opportunities for response to posts creates a spirit of learning, but also an opportunity to be heard by the other. It also empowers all ages to feel they have a voice that can be heard. Community is formed not around a single leader, but around relationships. Relationships come about when human beings find recognition and acceptance, but also a place where they can begin to serve another. What is distinctively different, but need not be, is that online communities invite those in community to be both producers and consumers of content. They also invite to make responses to like or dislike. In so doing, they begin to form a network of like-minded people. Now, I want to suggest that online worshiping communities seek to be inclusive and understand community to be made up of diversity and difference. Thus, we are a counter cultural movement in the world of social media. The truth we seek to live is this. Communion is to uncover love in the midst of diversity. And this is why online church can become an example of and a prophetic voice to the in-person worshiping communities, calling the body of Christ into unity that Christ prays for in John 17. Online communities meet when they can on a flexible 24-hour schedule. The relationship is always open. It operates out with time zones and physical locations compared to in-person encounters which are fixed to time in space and location. In this next part of the paper, I want to talk to you about what it means to live and worship at the intersection between the divine and the ordinary. For us, living in the digital age includes life on and offline. In many ways, they have become integrated. So we sit facing a screen. The internet becomes the medium through which the Holy Spirit touches our hearts. It is by this, His presence and power that He puts us in touch with each other. Thus, relationships between human beings are brought into communion through the Holy Spirit. I believe the internet has become a tool that the Spirit is using to connect with thousands of people who no longer feel comfortable being part of inherited methodology of church attendance. By this I mean the programming and the organizational structure of traditional church. I believe God is working through this technology, engaging with new people who He is opening to Himself. This engagement goes far beyond what we might understand as acceptable
traditional worship formats. Each of us are being confronted with the question, listen to this, could worship be being explored by those who are on a worship journey, yet they don't even know that they have taken this journey? Through art, poetry, music, science, maths, philosophy, politics, ecology, and many more disciplines, the Holy Spirit is helping to deepen the spiritual lives of many who have voluntarily left the inherited models of church, but who still are in pursuit of justice, mercy, compassion, and love. Now, anyone in pursuit of these ontological words, knowingly or unknowingly, are, in my view, in pursuit of God. It is therefore essential that Christians recognize the Spirit of God to be at work, building bridges into these disciplines, creating opportunities for the gospel to be contextualized and incubated within a wide variety of worldviews, and in so doing, to witness the gospel to be a transforming agent of hope and purpose in many lives out with the reach of inherited church. These are the new theologians and seek God seekers who the Holy Spirit has activated, drawing to Himself. Could there be a church in waiting outside the limited structures by which we have defined church? God has always been at work in His world. The risen Christ speaking to the church in Philadelphia says, Behold, I set before you an open door which no one can close. The internet is surely a modern day open door to which the Spirit is drawing the attention of the inherited church. It is a place where we will meet very different people who have been touched by the Spirit. But remember, Jesus speaks in John's gospel of the other sheep who are not of this fold. In the Acts of the Apostles, there were believers who had encountered God but didn't know it was the Holy Spirit. Look, what I'm trying to say is it could be the communion and fellowship of the saints, but much larger could the communion and fellowship of the saints be much larger than we have ever comprehended? So, what happens at this intersection? In Sanctuary First, we have threefold fellowship strategy that appears to have emerged to help facilitate relationships within the simultaneous community. It could be described in the following manner, the communal fellowship, the missional fellowship, and the discipleship fellowship communal fellowship. We need the interaction that comes between human beings to create a common fellowship. During this time of lockdown, we have come to see that the internet can be used as a tool to reach new disciples and to help nurture and sustain the wider Christian community. This is where fish are caught. This is where sheep are fed. This is where crosses are carried. This is where burdens are lifted. Casting our link or our hook into the internet means using blogs, podcasts, scripture readings, reflections, prayers, music, short films, and pastoral care as we seek to reach out and make new and lasting connections. The communal fellowship is open to all. Thursday evening online coffee shop is open to all 9 to 10, often goes on to 11. It is a place where people gather and share, and it's a place where deeper fellowship can blossom. Those who attend the coffee shop would have been strangers, but end up feeling part of the community. The Friday afternoon online jam sessions have proved to be a popular connecting point for musicians and songwriters and poets. The online art studio offers another touching place for creatives. These activity-based meetings on, online can be duplicated to enrich a manner of crafts and skills and disciplines that can be the touching place with a non-threatening spirituality. These activities have become an open door to engage with the mission of the Holy Spirit using His internet connections rather than an established church program. Referrals come from recommendations and personal relationships. The Friday Jam session is, has been supported by the Falkirk Recovery Group and the art studio by a group of people who feel estranged from organized church. The coffee shop, jam sessions, book clubs, and art studios all offer opportunities to collaborate and engage with artists and musicians, and also to have an open door on the internet where people can meet and chat and encourage each other. 
The next strand is a missional fellowship. This is intentional faith-sharing strategy, starting where people are, asking questions they are asking, not giving them the answers to questions they have not thought of yet. Reaching out, bridging the gap between inquiry and commitment. We use book clubs and also the, the Friday Jam session to introduce inquirers to faith coming from perhaps a different perspective. It could be from an idea in a novel or a more delineated study. For example, the C.S. Lewis five-week book club on Surprise by Joy last autumn was led by Sandy Smith from Belfast, which allowed for greater theological and biblical teaching to take place. And around 25 to 30 people gathered from all around the world just to be part of that, most of them all strangers to one another. Recently, we've become aware that the book club is being used by a school in Alabama. One day we had 83 hits on the book club page relating to a particular book. In other words, we think schools are also tapping into the idea that as we have a book read online, then they can, they can direct their pupils to that book and use it as material. Discipleship Fellowship. The weekly connect groups build on the daily scripture readings and prayer material produced by Sanctuary First Writers. The weekly Bible study material centered around three key readings for the week, pose three questions to help illuminate the scripture passages and to invite further reflection from the group. We have three connect groups at the moment that are known to us and a good many more that simply take the material from the site but choose not to register. Recently, we have started, as I said earlier, our 7 a.m. 10-minute daily prayer time on Facebook and to complement our evening prayers at the end of each day. And this is a strategy we are developing, but one we know is creating and developing a community of people journeying together with Jesus at the center. I want to just say a brief thing about communion online and then I'll finish. The new insights that online communion can offer us. Online communion can be both narrowcast to a few people interactively or broadcast simultaneously to a wide group of people with less interaction. It is the limitation of the medium that continually frustrates us from completely embracing that which is signified. Bring together two mediums together and an integrated reality is revealed. Bread and wine can signify a material physical presence, yet the internet signifies another kind of physical virtual presence brought about by technology wizardry. But it also helps demonstrate what we mean theologically by the otherness of the presence of God beyond our physical space. The metaphorical application of the internet and the physical presence of bread and wine brought together manifests a new dimension of sacred space, especially when seeking to understand the omnipotent nature of God or the omnipresent nature of God. It is a rich scene to mine. And I think the, Holy Sac the sacrament of Holy Communion celebrated online invites us to consider anew in our worship the mystery of the one and the many in the body of Christ. What I'm seeing here is that the internet can add to and enhance our understanding of worship and community. Congregations who take seriously the importance of the hybrid ecclesiology and missiology, which engages technology, will find themselves exploring a new understanding of what it means to be fully connected with a growing body of people out with their in-person services, people who are in search of a new reality, many of whom are unaware that it is Christ for whom they are searching. I mean such congregations will understand the significance of engaging with and resourcing in person and online worship, but they will also at some point come to realize that the internet is helping them reconnect in a, an ecclesiology that goes beyond the local church, taking them into a conversation with the early church fathers, exploring the significance of what it means to be part of the church triumphant, the church universal. So the discovery of technology integrating with, with theology to enhance our spiritual understanding of presence needs to be celebrated rather than dismissed. It is an exciting prospect to continue to reflect upon the ways which God reveals more of his being to, com his being to humanity in Christ. Surely the reason why we still live and move and have our being is that he has become 
and has more to reveal to us about who we are in Him. The internet has for many rekindled the understanding that church is not local or global, but the church is universal, Catholic and apostolic. The communion of saints throughout time and what has still to be and into eternity seeks to reclaim an identity that is, has been lost by some believers. The church has much to contribute to science and technology, but it also has a commission to go into the world and preach the gospel of peace. Indeed, more than preach, but to seek to bring about the end to war and thus fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah to beat swords and to plow shears. You might say we are on an eschatological mission. In Ephesians 3.10, the apostle writes that God chooses to use the church to explain to the world, the whole of heaven and earth, the mystery of his redemptive plan. We, so we are the people who have already crossed the dividing line of time, reaching out and touching eternity. The internet helps us to engage in two spaces at once, to live in the physical world while reminding us that worship is not simply an earthly pursuit in time and space, but it is a hybrid experience drawing us into the heart of the eternal. For surely it is by the power of the Holy Spirit that we find ourselves lifted up into the heavenly places. Online church confronts us with a technology that invites us to explore communion and presence beyond the space we have defined by bricks and mortar, time and physical location. The writer of Hebrews reminds us that we have no abiding city in this time and space, and in doing so, we are being invited to understand being a simultaneous relationship with ourselves and the other, and of course, the otherness of God. So that is the, some of the theology that I'm trying to work out. I hope you've not all fallen asleep, but, but it is to try and see that there's been some theological thinking behind the missional aspects that we've been developing in Sanctuary First. Thank you, Albert. You have stretched our minds and our imaginations. And there are a whole lot of ideas we need to think through. You will take questions? Just go. Please. Martin. Yeah, I think it, we've got to continue looking at how we build community because the church ha has been building community over the years and we know how to build that community in, in many ways. But we need to realize now that we can start working to build community online. And one of the areas I'm interested in pursuing and asking congregations to help us work on is our connect group material which we're using, we, the Bible study material is up every day, but there's an opportunity to have Bible study once a week on the Connect Group material, which brings together an opportunity for people to meet online and to look at some of the material that's on Sanctuary First and to discuss it. And there's an introductory video every week that helps them begin to have a discussion about it. And that's one way in which trying to create a community online, especially those who perhaps are not able to get out as often to church, but they can connect with those who are getting out to church online on, on like a hybrid group. But secondly, the, 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 the book groups, the, the book clubs is again another way of creating community. If you pick the right books, you can start attracting groups of people who might like to study that particular book. 
and then engage with a discussion around that particular area. And so it's trying to find out areas, small groups, small groups of people building community, and eventually people do want to eventually meet up with one another, and it becomes a kind of, you know, let's meet up, and it becomes a, a kind of, you know, it, it happens out of just building a relationship. People feel confident then to come and meet up. But sometimes people are afraid to meet up and come to a location, but they're more willing to be part of an online group and look in from the distance. So, our, so you're actually help, trying to help us redefine what we mean by community. Yeah, understanding that we, we all know, but we actually are all just redefining it ourselves anyway, because we're, we're all now on this internet. And, and we used to talk about being online and offline, but now people are now no longer even using that terminology because it's part of, we, we are in an integrated world now where the, the internet is part of how we connect with one another, how we do our work. I mean, there's many people now are going to be working maybe two days a week at home or maybe three days a week at home and then working in a space. But so we, we're, we're in the process of this ourselves, but we have, with Sanctuary First, we've been thinking about this since, well, for a, long, a bit longer than most people, and trying to think how the church can begin to use this internet to create community. And we, we, we're just exploring it like everyone else. We're not experts. Many of you will have more insights to offer us, and that's why I'm keen to come and give these kind of lectures, because we can engage with others who can come and say, we can help you with that, or we can we can take it another way. So we want people to see that Sanctuary First is almost like the Church of Scotland's linked charge online. If you want to be part of a linked charge with Sanctuary First, we're really quite keen to build that kind of relationship so that we can use our resources and explore how we use technology to share the gospel and our expertise. Duncan. It's all of these things. It's all of these things. It, we, 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 haven't, we, we haven't asked people these questions online, partly because, again, we, we are aware that people are coming online are sometimes have been hurt by church. We're trying not to ask too many personal questions about people unless they, they share it with us. So we, we, we don't try to be intrusive into people's lives. They come, if they come onto a group, they can share and eventually they tell the story. And when people come onto groups, they do tell us a story. I get emails from people regularly who will say, um, we were part of an independent church. We, were, um, we felt hurt because one, one lady giving an example said, I was a nurse and I couldn't get to church every Sunday. And uh, my husband wanted to get to church every Sunday, but he worked for a charity doing charitable work on a Sunday, so he sometimes was at church once every, every you know, he would miss two Sundays out of a month, and, and they wanted to join, they wanted to join the local Bible study group, but the pastor has told them they couldn't join it because they weren't regular church attenders, <laughs> you know. Now, that's people who are hurt, that's one side then there's those within the Church of Scotland who have been hurt, have felt ex exploited or felt bullied. You know, we've got a great bullying culture in, in certain areas within the, in the life of congregations. Sometimes we don't talk about it, but it's there. And people are hurt and they, 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 still, they just don't want to, they don't want an argument in the church session. They don't want a fight. They just disappear quietly. Or there's people who have been divorced. And the, the interesting thing is, in the, a couple that have been coming to church regularly, and one, one keeps coming to church and the other feels they can't and they don't go anywhere, but they still have faith. It's numerous, it's, it's, you, but we, don't, we, don't, we haven't kept statistics 
because I didn't think it was my job to do that. But I know that we're reaching a wide group of people who come and tell us their stories. The numbers are, let me give you an example, in 2020, the, the, our, our, we had half a million unique visits to the site. We had roughly, um, there's about roughly in the Facebook, people who come on regularly, there's about, we know there's about, there's a regular connection of about 5,000 people on Facebook. On our app, um, monthly app downloads is about 14,000 downloads a, a month. Um, it, it, it's sizable, it's sizable. It could be more if we had, if we had more staff and more ability to do it. And basically, I've been running this myself with the, the two part time, he, uh, an editor who edits the stuff for us 20 hours a week, and uh, some volunteers, and a, another graphic designer, and also Scientist Media, who are a production company, it, it has a, a real interest in Sanctuary First because they helped create it. So they end up not charging us the kind of rates that they should be charging but they do that because they're passionate about the work of what we do, because it was part of their creation, part of their development. So th that, that's the kind of... Now, Albert uh, has challenged us with many new ways of thinking. I, I mean, so there must be more questions, please. I mean, for example... Oh, Derek, sorry, Valerie, right, thank you. Uh, the question is, how do we apply part of what Albert was saying to the way the session works? And it... Right. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that's where the connect groups can help, starting giving people that opportunity to connect into whatever that connect group might be, whether it's a, a Bible study group, whether it's a an art group, whether it's a, a music connect group, you know, or whether it. So you could be developing opportunities for people to come in to be part of sharing and creating a, an online community. You need to. It needs to be interactive. This is. You need to go beyond streaming out church service. And this is what you're now talking about. We, 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 it's, and, and people will only watch church service for about half an hour, and they've got to be—they've got to know the people in the church. Let's be honest. Most church services, if you've got a camera at the back and you're just focusing in, it, it, it's probably not going to attract a lot of outsiders. But if there's an opportunity within the community to be doing stuff online to invite a friend to join them on the on, on on the you know on the line group to study a book that they've been reading i'm part of a book club why don't you do it on, we do it on zoom you begin to engage with people and you begin to create that oh and by the way there's something else you can have a look at we do this this is happening you can look at this on a thursday or a friday and it connects with a and, and it may very well be connecting with, it. many of our connections are with older people, because younger people are, are sometimes not wanting to 
get involved at that level, but older people sometimes have been housebound, they've been away from church for a long time, and this is a wonderful opportunity for them to get, be connected to church. I mean, I again have stories of people just saying beautiful emails from, you know, reconnected with church again. I've been, I felt as though I've, I've been forgotten about, but now I'm part of something. And somebody in their own home can read the Bible and can send a little video clip from, on their phone. And if they don't know how to do it, we just get somebody to do it for you. Get, get somebody in the family to do it. And then you're engaging them in the family. Family saying, what are you doing, Granny? Oh, I'm reading the Bible for church and I'm doing it online. Will you film it for me? The grandson says, okay, I'll film it. And guess what? I'm on Sunday. Do you want to watch? And then the grandson comes to watch Granny reading the, on Sunday. Now, if you have something interesting that might attract the young fella or the young person, that can be a way of drawing them in. Also, on the technical side, in engaging young people to help you design things. You know, design the way you do your website, design uh, the interaction that you want to have, or even do the technology in the church. People say, well, we can't do it because we've got nobody to work the technology. Or there's one person who dominates it and thinks they know everything about it. You need to create teams so that it's nobody's. We're great at this in the church, by the way, creating zones for people who become, it becomes a power zone. This is, my, this is my mixing desk and we'll be tired if anybody else touches it. But we need to create teams so that more people can come in. And this is back to this theology of what it means to be a, a community in harmony and consensus with one another and sharing leadership and passing it on. So it, and it's all based on a, kind of a Trinitarian theology. So we, we need to think all that kind of that way forward. But yeah, I mean, I think you've, you're on the right lines to start thinking about these things and make them happen. Martin? Yeah, I, again, I would say you need a policy with that. that Sir, could I just remind people what the question was? Because not everybody will hear it. It's really how we extend Albert's idea to pastoral care within the congregation. That I, th I think individual pastoring is got, I've got concerns about that, in that if I'm going to do, somebody comes on and wants to speak to me about a pastoral issue, I will almost inevitably say that I will need to have another member of the team to listen in because you cannot be in a situation where you, you, can, be, you can be seen as a creditor as bullying or, or somebody could actually record that when you're there. So you need to be very, very careful. It, it's, it's an interesting area, but I think you've got to be very careful how you, you yeah. pursue that uh, and you need to have the proper safeguards when you're doing that kind of that kind of work. I mean, we we were we certainly have been thinking about having a chat line, to a, a 24-hour chat line on the, on on the site. And one of the things that stopped me from doing, we've got the technology, we can do it, is creating the team of people who are able to you know, work with that and experienced enough to do that well. You know, I, and you know, there are churches in in Sweden and other places that are doing it, and pastors are taking interest. But you always would probably have somebody listening in to just make sure that nobody's getting hijacked. 
Thank you, Albert. I think our time is pretty well running out. Are there any other questions, please? Can I ask you, if you haven't taken one, uh, this is our annual report that we give out uh, every year. There's copies of it as you leave, and uh, it would give you an insight into some of the things that I've been saying tonight. And uh, if you want to be in touch with me again, or send me an email, I'd be happy to talk further with you about it. We, ha we thank Albert now tonight for inspiring us and say, stretching our imaginations to new ways of doing things. Thank you very much, Albert. Thank you. Thank you. Now the blessing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and remain with us always. Amen.